right, welcome back, ISS EDU Learn. Ask me anything. Uh, we're still here live at the NYC uh, live fair here with ISS, and we have a whole bunch of recruiters and candidates here uh, looking for various types of teachers and positions that they would like to fill. So we have another guest here with us today. I will let him uh, kind of uh, introduce himself. So, and we'll get going with all these uh, great questions about the school. So, welcome today. Thank you very much. <laughs> good. So, talk to us, David. Uh, Dave Flashberger. I'm the head of school at American Academy Casablanca and been there six years. Love Morocco and happy to be here with you today. Wow. Okay. Morocco. How was yeah. the weather over there? You know, it's awesome. With? It's awesome. Get a little cold, get a little heat, but it's really yeah, nice. Both, bo uh, both, both worlds. Yeah, you get it. But uh, I'm from Chicago, so I don't miss those winters at all. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Talk to us a little bit about the school. Talk to us a little bit, like when you first entered the school. What is the feeling? Uh, you know, it's actually it's an interesting uh, design mm -hmm. that wanted a, a hugging feature. So it's a big school. We're about 850 kids. Uh, max will be about a thousand. But the, the two wings of the school will kind of form this curvature, which welcomes you in. And there's a courtyard in the center. We, uh, we're we located in Greentown. You know, Morocco's an arid climate, but it's real green where we are. So mm -hmm. our campus is very green. We have one of the biggest campuses in Africa. Um, and yeah, we're growing. We just opened a second campus downtown. We're opening a school in Marrakesh next year. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we're a growing organization. Wow. Okay. Okay. What's the teacher culture like over Teacher or the staff? Sure. Would you, say? you know, we're mainly American and Moroccan. So okay. about 40 some Americans, I would say 45 Moroccans, you know, teaching the languages, PE, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but we have almost 20 total nationalities on the staff. Um, my top priority when I came six years ago, myself and Sean, who's the deputy director, is we really wanted to change the culture, a lot of negativity. Um, and we wanted teachers to know that this was not just somewhere they're working, this is their home. That's right. And so we really focused on making the teachers happy, you know, happy teacher, happy school. Mm -hmm. They're the ones doing the work. And so we did our best to focus, give them as much support as possible. I think they're really collaborative now. They seem to get along both socially and professionally, which is important. Um, what I like, because I've done this a long time, this mm -hmm. is my ninth school, oh. you know, I've been around, or my ninth country, I'm sorry. So um, I've been around a lot. And here, the Moroccan and the foreign staff really get along well. And okay. that's important to you. Nice, nice. You know, we want them to feel like one team because sometimes they feel kind of separate, the foreign and the local. Of course. Lives. What activity are you doing to kind of fuse that gap? Sure. Part of it is just the way we schedule things. We have a lot of collaborative time. Um, we try to get them to socialize right from the start. Like myself or the deputy director, we pick them up right from the airport. Mm -hmm. You know, we're the ones, oh, the yeah. first face they see. <laughs> You know, we bring them to a fully furnished department, you know, and we get them in touch with teachers right away. They don't want to hang out with me, okay. you know, they, <laughs> you know, right, they, they go for lunch or something. But, you know, that's about it. They want to meet other teachers. They want to get out because uh, Morocco is a really cool place. Mm -hmm. okay. So we try to get them into the culture as quickly mm -hmm. as possible. Talk a little about safety of individuals to come over there with their families and things, you know, uh, they should look out for. Is, is there any safety measures or any, anything like that? that you know, individuals should, serious matters that we should speak about that you should just be aware of. It's one of the reasons that uh, my family and I, we went there mm -hmm. is uh, my daughter was entering high school. We were looking for a, a safe place uh, that had great travel opportunities. And so we were looking around different countries, but Morocco is very safe. Um, there's petty crime, of course, okay, you know, okay. cell phones stolen mm -hmm. and things. Uh, great travel opportunities. So our teachers get out. They're also use of foreigners. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a huge tourist country, huge destination. Marrakesh is number one, but they're they're used to foreigners there. So the teachers can get out. Casablanca is a relatively modern city. You know, it's it's not Paris, but uh, they're used to a lot of activity there. So the teachers have their social life. Okay, very good. Yeah, okay. big school. How, how um, students is that? How, how big We're eight hundred fifty kids. Okay. At our main campus, we have about one hundred and sixty some at our secondary campus, mm -hmm. um, and then staff were about two hundred total on the team, but about a hundred academic staff, mm -hmm. one hundred and ten. Dave, talk to us about the parent community. How do you engage the parents in sure. the school? 
you know, this is one that I'm, I'm not going to exaggerate. I've mm -hmm. done this a long time. These are the easiest parents I've worked. Mm -hmm. um, they're very appreciative. I have very, almost never have a parent come complaining about grades, uh, which is not true at a lot of schools. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have some behavioral issues like any other school, but generally I find our parents are so supportive of what we do. It, it's really a pleasure. And so if we have a tough meeting coming, you know, be myself and the guidance counselor. And one of the first things I did when I came is I was very honest with the parents. Mm -hmm. I said, you know, we have a nice school year, but our academic levels aren't where they need to be, but we got a lot of work to do. And I think the parents appreciated that honest approach. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We told them, you know, we, we have to get better in math. It's our first daily. Mm -hmm. We're really weak in math. So we spent a lot of time and money on it, uh, brought in a new team. But, you know, the parents weren't used to hearing that. I told them, you know, I'm not sure if you're familiar with map testing. You yeah. know, we do map testing. Mm -hmm. I said, the scores are going to be bad. At my first parent meeting, it's the first thing. These scores are going to be bad. Here's our plan to improve. But I'm not going to lie to you and say what a great school we are. And, you know, we're a good school. We got a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm. And I think they appreciated that honest approach. So what level are you at with this uh, math strategy? Is it, you see it improve? Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah. okay. We became an IB school. Mm -hmm. um, so we got the IB VP. Uh, we're an AP okay. also. We offer IB and AP in high school. Um, so it's gotten better. Mm -hmm. We still have work to do. Still not happy with the French and Arabic levels because mm -hmm. um, we teach both. We just started Spanish this year and Chinese. Um, but, you know, French and Arabic are essential in Morocco. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of our area of focus now. It's fine, but we don't want to be fine. Right, right, right. Yeah. Great. <laughs> right. The excellence is the key. I just want to, as we end off, just two more quick questions I wanted sure. to ask. Um, in regards to, you know, I do hear that you have a lot of Moroccans and Americans, uh, but what is the diversity, the diversity uh, of the students look like over there? And on top of that, um, what type of activity? Just give us an example of an activity that you see either the staff or the students doing in order to get that inclusion going. Perfect. So we're about 70% Moroccan. Mm -hmm. The other 30% come from... 35 different countries. Mm -hmm. uh, China's our second biggest group now. We've had a huge influx. Um, Morocco and China have very close relations. So we have a lot of Chinese students and then sprinkled from Africa, Middle East, Europe, you know, the Americas. So we have a relatively diverse student population. Um, even our Moroccan families, most, not all, but most of them are very international. They've lived in the States, they've lived in France, you know, they've traveled a lot. And so we have a very international population. Just today, I missed it, but we just finished. Um, it rained too bad, but uh, we had our Lunar New Year celebration. Oh, huge event. Um, you know, we had caterers coming in and a big event, a big show. Kids loved it. At the same time, we we're hosting uh, the American Association of Schools in Morocco, eight school, the basketball tournament. So it's a busy day for me to be here in New York. Oh. <laughs> but um, And so, yeah, we, we have a lot of success in athletics yes and we try to do as many different cultural events as possible not just celebrate moroccan culture or american mm -hmm. culture but give you know exposure. yeah so apparently i heard they were both big big hits today okay all right well good stuff then i guess as we kind of dimmer down here the last question i want to ask especially as what they call me a millennial i guess is just going to stick from here on out they know there was a gen alpha but we learn, right? When we learn, of course. But um, and it's Gen Alpha. I feel like they're going to be in the technology realm. You know, they're going to be, they're going to the Apple Pro is going to be what their basics right. are. So, <laughs> so I would like to know in the ever changing world of technology, um, how do you guys um, take that in? And do you guys are you guys big on technology just all together? Sure. So the kids from fourth grade up, they bring a device, mm -hmm. almost all laptops, right? Um, we do encourage, and especially with this chat GPT and these new mm -hmm. new developments, you know, a lot more traditional, especially with writing, because it's so, I mean, the word is tempting, so tempting for them to get help mm -hmm. on their writing assignment. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I teach a couple of classes myself, and I'm like, you're going to write that essay right in front of me on paper, just like I did when I was in school, um, because writing is thinking. And so we have technology, you know, projectors in every class, and some of our teachers, especially the younger ones, they use a lot of technology, but we also have a, a traditional approach as well. So it depends on the teacher. So when we talk to the teachers, you know, we have a basic scope and sequence that you got to follow, but you got to make it your own. Right. So your class, if you're teaching economics or I'm teaching, it might look very different, but as long as we're covering the same concept, 
you can use whatever technology you need. Mm. Or, or like my class, I use almost none. But mm. that's okay because you know I'm, I'm meeting the the needs of the kids the best I can. That's, okay, so you're keeping that open policy. Yeah, right? but with some standards, so. Of course, and so we do. Uh, we do limit. We don't let them use cell phones on campus. You know, that's a big one. There's such a distraction. And so that's something that, uh, you know, the kids are on their screens so much that mm -hmm. you know, we do want them to be in the here and now when they're on campus. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Here and now. So important. Thank right. you. Thank you so much for spending this little 15 minutes with me. Yeah. I really but appreciate if it. If you could tell our listeners exactly if they want to know more information about the school admission, the tuition, else uh, where can they go on our website everything's there um they can reach out see a nice video about the school see our beautiful campus mm -hmm. uh see some of the kids um and just contact me you know we're looking for quality educators we want people who love kids mm -hmm. and want to challenge absolutely as well and that's that's what we're looking for so hopefully we'll find some here in new york or if you're listening here you want to come to sunny morocco one of the most beautiful countries in the world contact us and we'd love to talk just tell us what the website is again it's www.aac.ac.ma. All right. And without further ado, thank you so much, Dave, for that. All right, listeners. All right, we're out. <laughs> All right. And we have another 15 minutes until our next interview. And see you soon, educators. Bye-bye.